Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. The Belanders goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, one acknowledge the Akiam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, I'm in Psalm 69. The 69th Psalm, let's start at the top. It says, and it's through the Spirit, um, just kind of started reading here. So, Psalm 69, verse 1, Save me, O the Most High, power, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I seek, I sink in a deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. All right, and really basically going into affliction. This is King David. You know, the Lord's servants, you know, we, we know that when we come in this knowledge, come in this truth, that we have to prepare ourselves for affliction and temptation and suffering, right? As it's written in, let me get Ecclesiastes, Sirach 2, verse 1, 2 and 1, Ecclesiastes. My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, Prepare thy for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see? So when we come into this knowledge and we come into this truth, we need to be prepared to suffer. We need to be prepared to be brought to a low estate. And we need to do it cheerfully. All right? We got to endure. All right? Remember, the, the acceptable men are tried in the furnace of adversity, right? Like it's written right here. Verse 5, I'll read it again. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. All right? So you're going to suffer in this knowledge, in this truth, all right? Ecclesiastes 1, 18, I'll bring it out. I read it yesterday. Or it says, 1, 18, Ecclesiastes, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So that's, you know, that's a given, man. When we come into this knowledge, come into this truth, you got to be prepared to suffer. You know, and really, we're coming into some... Uh, Interesting times where, you know, uh, through the Spirit, hey, the, the persecution on the Lord's servants, the prophets, you know, it, it might be happening soon with uh, Esau, Edom starting to, you know, put his hands on on the prophets, put, you know, kill some of the prophets, put, you know, do, you know, the famine of the word might be coming soon. They may take us off the streets, you know, where we can't do that, take away our freedom of speech. You know, they're, they're, they're devising laws and, uh, you know, they're signing uh, legislation, um, which is eventually we won't be able to teach on the street, you see. So we have to get in that spirit of uh, endurance, the spirit of, of, of uh, you know, being able to endure the suffering. Uh, this is Psalm 69, <clears throat> 3. I am weary of my crying, my throat is dried, mine eyes fail while I wait for my power. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs on my head. They would, they that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Right, and and it's the same thing now. You know, we have we have innumerable innumerable amount of enemies right a innumerable amount of people who hate the they hate the hebrew israelites they hate the truth coming out on 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 the earth they hate us standing on our feet they hate our doctrine you know these heathen they they want to be part of the doctrine and when we tell them that they're you know they can't build with us just like our forefathers told them right let's get that real quick ezra four
Verse 2, let's read out of the 4 and 2. Then it's talking about the heathen wanting to be a part of this truth, wanting to be a part of, you know, part of our, you know, part of our movement, if you will, part of our waking up. Ezra 4 and 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assur, which had, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua who were Israelites, and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, unto our power. But we ourselves together will build unto the, unto Yahweh, the power of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. All right. So that's that's. There's nothing new under the sun, you know. These heathen will come to the camp. They'll want to be, you know. They'll, you know, because people they think they're Christians. They think they're, they think the Bible's for everybody, every nation, every uh, you know, every kind of people. So they'll come and, and they, they act like they come in peace, but then when you tell them the truth that it's only for Israel, then they become angry and sometimes they become violent and they, you know, they, because they're mad because we're telling them the truth that they can't build with us. They have nothing to do to build with us. They have nothing to, to do to build a house unto our power, Yahweh, right? Let's read verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in buildings, just like they're doing now. All right, they remove our videos. Persecution is going to come on us very soon. You know where we we're they're going to pass laws and legislation to where we can't we can't be out on the street corners teaching our people. They'll do it crafty though, you know, because Esau's a serpent. He's going to make it sound like uh, some other, it's some other reason why that he's taken away the freedom of speech. When the main reason is for, is for the prophets to be off the streets and off the internet, you know, they don't want the truth. They don't want the truth out. They don't want to be exposed. They, they see that the internet is exposing them, you know, well, the prophets are exposing the elite. We're exposing Esau Edom via the internet, right? Via really the Holy Spirit. But you get the point, you know. Esau Edom is not happy about the Israelites teaching on the streets. He doesn't like the notion of the of the um, you know of us on the street teaching. Let me grab uh, Psalms. I'm not Psalms. Uh, Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians two. Wait. Oh no, that was it. Second Thessalonians two and it says <clears throat> I'll start at two, Second Thessalonians two and two that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be, be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? So we're, we're revealing him. We're exposing him. The prophets. You know? People are learning who the wicked of the Bible is. People are learning. You know, and, and you even have Edomites <laughs> waking up to this truth. You know, they're obviously an Edomite's not going to receive the entire truth, but they, they, you know, they, there's a, like, for instance, the, the MOTB, the Mark of the Beast, you have Edomites in the Bible Belt who they're going to come strongly against that, that device, right? And the prophets, we've been on the streets, you know, uh, screaming at the top of our lungs not to take the MOTB, not to take the... RFID C hip. So he's being revealed for the wicked that he is. His wicked devices are being revealed. You know, we're warning the 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 elect not to take that device. He's the his sin is being revealed. The man of sin is being revealed. Verse four. 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And now who does that? So the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, he set himself up as God in, in, in the temple. He gets worshipped by all the heathen nations, by the, all the two-thirds. They're worshipping a white Jesus, are they not? Right? Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things, and yet and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. So that's what we're doing. We're revealing him in his time. This is his time to rule. And we're revealing who this man of sin is, who this wicked this wicked uh, you know, nation is, which is Esau, Edom. All right. And it's going to be, a, it's going to end bad, you know, according to the scriptures, according to the prophecies for Esau, Edom, right? Let's keep reading. It says, remember, verse five, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right? So who's the mouth? The mouth is the prophets, and Yahweh is consuming the wicked, who are the so-called white people, the Edomites, by, by you know, revealing who they are, revealing. Bible, revealing their wicked devices, revealing their wicked uh, crafty counsel against our people, right? Even with the the Novid nineteen, that was a wicked device against our people. So a lot of our people died, had strokes, had um, you know, a lot of people of our people blood clots. They had to get their legs, arms amputated because their blood was clotting in their in their in their limbs. You know, um, you had heart attacks, strokes, immune systems being weakened, all by that jump shot that people were taking. That was a wicked device against our people. <clears throat> and Esau's a mad scientist. He's the wicked. So he, it was also against his own people because he doesn't even care about his own damn people. Right? So, um, it says... And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, which are the prophets, right? It tells you, well, we know we are the mouth, right? Luke 1 and 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So the prophets are the mouth of Yahweh, Bashem Yahashai, or of Yahweh. We're not, Yahweh is not going to come down and... and off his throne and speak to you you people no he's going to put his spirit on his servants to speak to you the prophets and then we're the ones who consume the wicked you know and the way he's doing it by the spirit of his mouth first his prophets and then he's going to destroy the with the brightness of his coming which is going to be Yahweh Shai and all the angels when they when they come and wage war on, you know, the heathen nations, starting out with Esau, Edom, okay? So let me go back to Psalm 69. Uh, I'm just reading, too. I don't, you know, you don't know where the Spirit's going to take you. Psalm 69, because I'm barely on verse uh, 5. Oh, Most High, Thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Yahweh of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O Most High of Israel. So David, King David was praying for the elect. He was praying for the prophets to be in the future. Because who's the ones waiting on Yahweh? We are. All these other... All these other um, people, they're not waiting on Yahweh Bashem Yahashai. They, they, they could care less. They have no reverence for the truth. The ones that are waiting on Yahweh Bashem Yahashai are the Lord's prophets, right? And the elect. The ones that are in their right mindset. The ones who 
we crave the kingdom, right? The majority of these people, they don't want the world to end. They want they want wickedness to, to reign forever, unknowingly, right? But the Lord's servants, the prophets, we crave and seek Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, all right? And in this uh, chapter, King David's praying for the elect. Verse 7, because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. Right, and, and, and that's what it is. When you come in this truth, you're going to suffer, right? You're going to have your, your, your family members are going to you know, alienate you, you know, because they don't agree with your doctrine. Well, it's not our doctrine, but they don't agree with the doctrine that we believe in. I don't agree with the truth at the end of the day. And it's not all of them because a lot of them you know, are not, I'm not going to say a lot of them, but some of them will believe, okay? Verse uh, 9, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. Right. And that's that's talking about when you come in this truth and you come in this knowledge. Sackcloth is a garment of, of um, grieving, suffering, crying, you know, mourning. <coughs> so that's what it is. We wear those garments. Those are those. Those are us in mourning. We're crying on the, on the street corners, begging, pleading, begging, right? Praying, praying means to beg. We're, what are we begging? What are we praying for? We're praying for, we're praying for the Yahweh Bashem Yoshai to deliver us out of our out of our uh, captivity, you know, which is misery for us. If you're in your right mindset, you're. This is a miserable place for you, man. You're you're not. This is not uh you know the 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 party place. This is not the rest. This is not the place where where you're going to be successful. Because even if you are so called successful. You look at the people, you look at these celebrities. Look at a guy like in the news right now, Ryan Garcia. That guy looked like he's suffering and he's he's got millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. All these other celebrities that Esau Edom, he does the, the, the shame rituals on. You know, this is not our rest. Why the hell do we want to stay here? You know, we want to be we want to be um, you know delivered from this place. Ezekiel nine and It says right here, Ezekiel 9 and 4, And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right? So who's sighing and crying? It's the prophets. We're sighing and crying because we're sick of the abominations that are all around us. We're sick of seeing the, all of these mo's, all of these uh, trannies, all of the, and it's all pushed on our kids. Those vibrations are pushed in the schools. You know, we're sick of these wicked ass women who are who are just way out of order. You know, they have this uh, this um, masculinity to uh, about them. You know, we don't want masculine women nowadays. You you want to look for a woman, man? And you you come across these women. They they, they act like men to the point where they even. <laughs> I heard there was a trend that women, when they get to their 30th body count, they throw a big-ass party for them, you know? So, they, I mean, that's something that's not supposed to be celebrated. So basically, what they do is they celebrate um, being a whore, you see? And when a woman's not set up to, to be a whore, so when she is a whore, fucks up all her chemicals in her brain and her physicality. is just, she's, she's useless, really. She's a waste, right? You go out on the weekends, you know, if you just decide to go out on the weekends, you're single, and what are you going to do? You're going to go find a woman that's already been ran through, uh, you know, 30 to 100 men? This is an abomination, you know? Then you expect to, to settle down with a, a person like that, you know, a woman like that? Come on, man. This place is not our rest. We're in prison here, according to the scriptures. Psalm 
69. <clears throat> or even if you have a woman, and, and you know, in this society, if you have a woman that's ha has a 10 person body count, 10 man body count, <laughs> unfortunately, you should be happy because these bitches are going through through men like uh, like 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 no other, you know. And that's just the, the the fact of this place. I mean, you know, these women are at an all time high with not only their body counts, but the, the way they think. They think they're the, the they're on top of the they're above the man, which is totally out of order. And it's not it's not a, it's not the way of Yahweh Bashem Um Let me grab that real quick. A woman shall compass a man. This is the times we're in. It's a new thing in the earth, the Lord says. Jeremiah 31 and 22 says, middle of your screen, for I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice. Oh, I went to, sorry, I went to the wrong, so lucky, to the wrong book. Jeremiah 31 in 22, it says, <clears throat> How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For Yahweh hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. So this is a new thing in the earth where these women are, are ruling over their husbands. Or they're, they're, they're the, uh, you know, these women have come past us, right? You have, you have the men... I mean, I, I, how many times have you seen it where the man is, uh, his wife leaves him? She got a false sense of pride because she, her, her, her pride got built up on social media. She got validated by hundreds and thousands of different men who were not her husband. And then all of a sudden, she's like bold, big mouth, loud, and uh, and, and 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 you know, basically just a a demon, right? She becomes a demon. Lashing out on everybody, and uh, wanted wants to you know she instead of being led by her husband, she's going to be led by her her own uh, her own vain um, mindset, right? These women are they want to do their own thing, right? They don't want to listen to their husbands. Their husband tells them to to change her her apparel. She's going to have an attitude. Tell her husband. Her husband tells her to, to to stay in the house. She's gonna have an attitude. Hell, if the husband tells her her to make him a cup of coffee, these modern women, uh, the bitch is gonna have an attitude just for making coffee. But well, who will she make coffee for? She'll go to. She'll be happy at work making coffee for Esau, her boss, at the job, right? Because this society's all fucked up, man. It's got our women all fucked up. Got us in a, in a state of mourning, in a state of, uh, you know, this is a state of abominations all around us, like we read in Ezekiel. You know, that's why the Lord said, hey, when you come into this truth and you start having wisdom, be prepared for the temptation. Be prepared, ready to endure. Be be, be ready to suffer. And really, you know, being in this truth, uh, you know, having a little bit of experience in this, it really does hit. You know, you, you get to that point where you're like, man, this place is fucked up. Then you get around these women, these Babylonian women, and they ain't nothing nice, you know? And then and just think about that, because we're on like a, a couple, maybe two or three generations of women just wicked as hell, you know? Well, I, I mean, women have always been wicked, but now in the time that we're in, they have a lot of freedom, a lot of power. You know, back in the day... I would say even 40, 30, 40 years ago, women weren't, you know, they didn't have the same just, the same uh, liberty, same freedom they have now, right? But, hey, don't worry about it. Yahweh Yashai, just like he's going to humble Esau Edom, he's going to humble the women, all right? Anyway, I'm kind of going off on a tangent with the women, but let me get back to Psalm 69, and I'm at uh... a... <clears throat> I'll start at 10, where I was. When I wept and chastened, my soul was fasting. That was to my reproach. Right. Now, people, we're, now we're ashamed 
people are ashamed to like look at us shame uh, look at us shameful because we're doing the right thing we're 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 over here we'll, we'll take a day to fast right to just to help you know because fasting is is um afflicting your own body and it's purifying your own soul and people look at us like and, and they're like you know even pushing this truth pushing this knowledge people look at us like we're the weird ones you know Oh, this dude's, he's wearing a, a long garment on the street corner teaching the Bible. Oh, this guy is, uh, he's fasting now, you know. He thinks he's something special. You know, they always, like, talk shit about whatever we do, right? Instead of looking at it as a righteous thing, they look at it as, as a, man, I'm, it's a shame to be around that brother, you know. Verse 11, I made sackcloth also my garment. And I become a proverb unto them. Right. Our sackcloth is, is, a, is you wear sackcloth during a time of mourning. Right. And the real men, you know, in this world, the real, the, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yashai, you should be in a time of mourning because the state of your people, the state of your women, the state of your children, the state of, I mean, just look around at this place. You, you shouldn't be happy and proud. This is not something where you, you should be proud of. This is something you should be ashamed of. This whole place is fucked up. And who is to blame? Esau Edom. He's the one who fucked it all up. He fucked our people up. He fucked the mindset of our children, the mindset of our, pe of our daughters, of our sons. You know? Verse 12. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was a song of the drunkards. Right. I mean, it's just the mocking. People mock the, tr the true man of Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Yahweh, in an acceptable time. O Most High, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Right. So we're praying for that Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, has mercy on us just to, just to, just to hear us. And eventually get us out, you know, get it, give us salvation. Get us away from this wicked place. Let's get to the, to the, uh, to the kingdom. Even if we have to suffer, right? Even if, cause we know we got to go through Jacob's trouble. We know we got to go through some, some bullshit and suffering. We know we're going to have to endure, but guess what? At the end of all that is our salvation. So we are ready to, to deal with it. The, the men who are in the right mindset, you're ready to deal with it. Right? You're ready to get that salvation. It says, Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink, and let me not be delivered, delivered from them that hate me in the hands of our enemy. But we know some of us will be, you know, through the prophecy. Some of us are going to get put in FEMA camps. Some of us are going to put in <coughs> prisons, jail, you know. It's all prophecy. It's all part of the part of the script. Fifteen. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. So let not this place overtake us. Right. Let no. What is that verse? Let no man take it. Thy crown. Give us the ability to endure all of these hardships. Give us the ability to endure all the wickedness, all these abominations around us. Because, you know, when you really come in this truth and you really start to understand, really everything around you is vexing, you know? The more you, like I said, I read it earlier, the, the, the more your knowledge you have, the more sorrow you have. You know, wisdom increases uh, sorrow, right? It, it really is what it is, man. It's some, sometimes it's hard to enjoy a day in this place. Even if you have a, a so-called, uh, you know, Something good to look forward to, you know. It's, you know, we're not negative people. We're not negative men. We just know that this place has got to fucking go, you know. Because, because you know, it's it, it, the enduring. To be honest, if you're in the right mindset, you're in the right spirit. It is easy to endure. You know, there's times when yeah, your spirit gets vexed and stuff. But even in those times when you're getting vexed, it's easy to endure this place if you really have your eye on the prize. You know, if you're really focused and zoned in on Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. No matter what suffering, no matter what vexation of spirit goes through, 
you know, whatever you're dealing with, you know, we take it cheerfully, like I read earlier in, a, in a Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter. We take it cheerfully. It's not it's not that hard to endure. But the point is, is fuck, man. We we know that there's a, you know, we, we know this ain't the end all be all, you know. <clears throat> Where am I at? Um, hide, verse 17, hide not and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Right, and now that we're in this truth, Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, he's not hiding his face from the Allah because we know that we know what he looks like. You know, we're no longer calling, uh, you know, when we get sit down to pray, that, that so called uh, white Jesus doesn't pop in our head anymore. Because why? Because Yahweh's not hiding his face from his servant anymore. You know, draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it, deliver me because of mine enemies. Right. This is the prayer of a righteous servant. Thou, thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. And mine adversaries are all before thee. Yahweh knows who is against us. Yahweh knows our enemies. Verse 20. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Right. And really the only comforter we have now is this, is this knowledge, this truth, right? The scripture. This is our, our, our only comforter, right? <clears throat> we have the brotherhood, you know. But, you know, that's what it is. You could tell if you're, you could tell David was a man of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai because why? He suffered. Did not Yahweh Shai suffer? Are the men in his truth who are sincere? Are you suffering? It's, 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 it should suffer you. And suffering goes into patience. You have to have patience, right, to deal with this place. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. All right, and gall that that's like a it's a bitter, a bitter substance, a bitter something that's like poison. It could be like poison. So this is this is what this place is. It's bitter and poisonous, right? Spiritually, it's a poison. This place, you know. And who wants to drink vinegar, right? That, that and this is really King David prophesying going into Yahweh Shai. Right, so you know, but that that's what it is. He's speaking like they, they they gave me also gall for my meat, which you go into that word gall, it goes into a bitter substance, which even could go into being going into piss, like somebody just you know like a, as in gallbladder, you know, vinegar. That's a you know, and nobody want to drink vinegar. <clears throat> Verse twenty-two. Let there, even when you drink that vinegar what that the people drink now, what's it called? The, um, wow, shit, what's it? People drink it for their health, you know? That, that stuff, I tried it for a while. That shit was nasty. I didn't want to drink it <laughs> after a couple times. Verse 22, let their table be a snare before them, and that which should have been there for their welfare, let it become a trap. So he right now, in this verse 22, you, you know, you praying for for our deliverance, praying for our well being, and then at the same time pray for the the, the wicked and these two thirds to let, let their table be a snare before them. The table going into the the scripture, like you know that their let their understanding be a trap to them, right? It's supposed to be for their welfare, but let it become a trap, and that's what it is for these two thirds and these heathen, you know. Because they're doing it wrong. They're not in the truth. They're not following. They're not. They don't understand the scripture. So their table be their understanding. Their table. Of, their understanding of the scripture becomes a trap. It's supposed to be for their good. For and this is really for the uh, the Israelites. But but it's an, and it's gonna become a trap for them. You got a lot of our people. Just go to TikTok. You see all of our people. Uh, TikTok false prophets is uh, all over that internet. Calling on the Jesus, white Jesus, calling on you know, mentioning gods that they their name they shouldn't even mention. You see, verse twenty three: Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Oh, I thought I was supposed to pray good for everybody. See, people people here because they don't understand the scripture. They want to be praying for even the wicked. They want to pray for the two-thirds. What's what's King David saying? He's saying, 
He said, he said, man, let their let their understanding of the Bible be a trap. He said, he said, let their uh, pour out indignation on them. You know, he's not praying uh, righteous things on them. He's praying for their uh, for their uh, for basically for them to perish, for them to suffer. That's a righteous thing to do. Don't don't act like you can't pray against the two thirds or, or you know. Don't act like you can't. There's duality when it comes to the Heavenly Father. He's 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 love and hate. You should hate those that hate Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It's okay to 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 wish um, evil on them. All right. I know, I know. You over here, if especially if it's your first time listening to a, a Hebrew Israelite lesson, you over here thinking we're the wicked because of the truth that we're speaking. But we're just, we're reading right out the Bible, right? King David was wishing indignation on, on the two-thirds. Verse 25, Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him who thou hast smitten, and they talk to, to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. And iniquity unto their, add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. You see, and iniquity means sin upon sin upon sin. So King David was going heavy and hard on the two-thirds right here. He's saying, let them continue to sin. Let, let them, don't even show them the truth. That's what he's telling. That's what we're reading right here. All right? And why? Because he's sick of the two. King David was in the same spirit as the, the, the men today, the, the prophets today. We're so sick of the two-thirds. We're sick of the heathen. You know, King David was sick of the two-thirds. King, King David was sick of the heathen. In King David's time, he was a warrior fighting against the heathen all the time, having battles with the heathen, you know? He was a warrior king, you know? But he had seen enough. By, by the time he wrote this Psalm 69, he's like, man, fuck the two-thirds. That's what his mindset was. That's what, his, that's what, he's, that's what we're reading right now, all right? <clears throat> and um let's see where we at oh look at to the point this is heavy right here let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous right though well, that's heavy right there he's like take him out the take him out of the book of the living you know but i am poor and sorrowful let thy salvation O god set me up on high I will praise the name of the Most High with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. And that's how we know uh, King David was of the elect, because who's going to praise the name of the Most High? Tells you in Ecclesiasticus 17 and 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Right. So King David, he knew the name. He wasn't like these fucking two-thirds running around calling it um, you know, Jesus Christ, he knew the name Yahweh Shai. He knew the name Yahweh. All right. He wasn't calling Yahweh Yah. He wasn't calling Yahweh um, uh, Yahweh. No, he, he was calling him Yahweh. He knew the name. It doesn't say praise the names. It says praise the name. All right. So you people, you Israelites especially, who, who want to sit here and say, oh, it don't matter what you call him, or I'm tired of people arguing about the name, the name, the name. No, the name is important. You you Israelites who can't get that, you're going to you're gonna be uh, severely dealt with, and, and justifiably so. And when it happens, the men who are in their right mindset, like just like King David, just like his prophets today, we're going to be happy. We're, we're a matter of fact, we're praying on that righteousness to, to be hid from you. Just like just like King David said in verse 28 here. 69 and 28. I'll read it again. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. And not be written with the righteous. You see. <clears throat> Alright. I'm at 31. It says. This also shall please Yahweh better than the ox. Okay. So let me start at 30 again. I will praise the name of Yahweh the Most High, with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please Yahweh better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. So us praising the name, that's how important the name is. If this is more pleasing to Yahweh, but getting his name right than by sacrificing an animal. All right? 
obedience is better than sacrifice, right? That's that's uh, and part of obedience is calling on the right name, All right? Let me get that real quick. Obedience is better than sacrifice, and that's what King David, um, basically in so many words, that's what he's saying right there, because he says, I, "I'm gonna, I will praise the name of the Most High with a song, and will magnify Him with thanksgiving." This also shall please Yahweh better than an ox or bullock that hath horns or hoofs. All right. So, First Samuel fifteen twenty two says. And Samuel has said, Hath Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than, than the fat of rams. So it's better, better to listen and to obey than to sacrifice these animals that we used to do in the, in the old law, which the law is still in effect. But obviously Yahweh Shai was the sacrificial lamb so he was the ultimate sacrifice for us. Really, that's the only law that that's the only law that really changed because Yahweh Shai was the sacrifice. The, the, he was the sacrifice, but we still gotta obey, and obeying is better than sacrifice. Part of obeying is is calling on the true name, just like we read with King David right here. All right, Psalm sixty nine, um, thirty two says. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek the Most High. For Yahweh heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Right, so we're the prisoners. He doesn't despise us because we actually know we're in captivity. We know we're in a prison. Babylon America is a giant prison, but the majority of our people, they think they're free. Because what? Because uh, Babylon, what did Esau call this place? The land of the free, the home of the brave. Yeah, right. We'll see how brave you are when them chariots pop and crack the clouds, right? We'll see how free you are when you when the Esau Edom puts all these sanctions and and legislation, changing laws where you can't even go into the next city because he's about to do all that. You see. So the humble can see this, We're talking about the names, you know, because he, he said it's better to praise his name than, than to sacrifice an animal. For verse 32, the humble shall see this and be glad in your heart shall live that seek the most high. For, for Yahweh heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. So he don't despise us who know we're, we're here in, uh, in captivity. Let the heaven and earth praise him and see the seas and everything that moveth therein. For the Most High will save Zion, which is another word for Israel, and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. 